Hello, my name is Dana Taysoon Burgess, and I'm the co-chair of Dance at the Arts Club of Washington. This evening, we present Laurel Victoria Gray. She is a dance scholar, choreographer, performer, and costume designer who specializes in women's dances from Silk Road cultures and the Islamic world. Her articles have appeared in publications including the Oxford University Press International Encyclopedia of Dance, the Encyclopedia of Modern Asia, and the Encyclopedia of Women in Islamic Culture. She combines her degrees in history with decades of field work and teaches global dance history at the George Washington University. Laurel is called the pioneer of Uzbek dance in America. She has danced in Central Asia and the Caucasus, including two years at the invitation of Uzbekistan's state academic Bolshoi Theater. In 1995, she founded the award-winning Silk Road Dance Company, which has toured nationally and internationally. She was awarded the 2003 Kennedy Center Local Dance Commissioning Project Award. And in 2007, in recognition of her great contribution to the development of Uzbek culture and art around the world, Uzbekistan's Ministry of Culture awarded her the title of Honored Professor at the Uzbekistan State Institute of the Arts. Gray presented the 2009 Selma Jean Cohen International Dance Scholar Lecture and has been an adjudicator for several international competitions, including Uzbekistan's 2018 Magic of Dance Festival. Most recently, she has presented papers at international conferences conducted by the Academy of Arts of Uzbekistan and the Fulbright Association. Enjoy this evening's presentation. Salam, welcome. Thank you for attending this presentation on exploring Persian Nowruz traditions. And special thanks to the Arts Club of Washington, DC for this invitation. Full disclosure, I am not Iranian, but I have played one on stage. But as a non-Iranian who has participated in the wonderful holiday for several decades now, I might be able to share some information for others who are just discovering this holiday. For those for whom Nowruz is their own beloved holiday, we hope you will share some of your own happy memories of Nowruz celebrations in the discussion at the end of my presentation. For Persian and Central Asian cultures, the new year is celebrated at the spring equinox. This ancient holiday of Nowruz, which means new day in Persian, is the first day of the first month, Farvardin, which celebrates rebirth and renewal. It has been linked to the mythical King Jamshid, who in a struggle against the killing forces of winter, saves mankind from destruction by creating and sitting in a fabulous gem studded throne lifted by demons into the heavens where he shines like the sun. He is acclaimed by the world's creatures and Jamshid scatters the jewels, proclaiming that this day is the new day, no ruse, and the beginning of the new year. And right now, we all could use a new day and rebirth. We are a world out of balance. The pandemic has driven us into isolation, where we depend increasingly on our screens, our computers, our phones, for more and more aspects of our lives. And while these tech tools have allowed us to continue to work and communicate, they've also led to an unhealthy addiction that has negative physical, emotional, and psychological impacts. But no ruse can restore physical and psychological health by reminding us of the need in man to return and discover nature. And when we discover nature, we can also rediscover the wisdom of our ancestors in the primal urge to dance. No rude celebrations take us out of doors, urging us to move, breathe, and dance, to witness the Earth's return to life. Dance was humanity's original activity that built a sense of community and a shared purpose necessary to survival. No ruse is the commemoration of a great reminiscence that of man's kinship with nature. Every year, this absent-minded child who, busy with his own artificial works and creations, 
is reminded by the seducing recollections of Nowruz to return to his mother's lap and to celebrate this return, this renewed meeting with her. So with this sentiment in mind, let's take a moment to share a dance that was filmed last year in Washington, D.C. on the very last day that the tidal pool and the legendary cherry blossoms were open to the public.
This deeply rooted need to connect with nature and each other exists in many Silk Road cultures. For the Kurds, the seemingly endless lines of dancers dressed in colorful holiday finery stretch across the countryside. People connect in the most literal sense of the word, holding hands and dancing shoulder to shoulder. As you can see in this ancient pottery shirt, this has been going on for a long time. In the former Soviet republics of Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Azerbaijan, all sharing deep historic and cultural connections with past Persian empires, this ancient spring holiday was not supported in the Soviet Union. But after independence, these nations have revitalized Navruz or Nevruz with huge public celebrations featuring music and dance. In Uzbekistan, before Navruz arrives, women stay up all night singing and dancing outside around a huge cauldron that they stir while preparing sumalak, the wheat pudding similar to Persian samanu. In Azerbaijan, on Chahar Shambhe, people gather outside to leap over small bonfires surrounded by onlookers who break into the ancient Yali line dance. And here is a critical component in traditional Noru celebrations. Everyone dances. While amateur and professional ensembles may take center stage, all ages can join in the communal dance expression of joy. This is another gift of Noru's. Dance has a benefit for mature adults as well. And we know from studies in the New England Journal of Medicine that of the various leisure activities in senior citizens, dancing is the only physical activity associated with the lower risk of dementia. So if all of you non-Persians have been convinced to start celebrating Nowruz, let's take a look at this unique tradition and things that we can do to assure a happy, healthy, and prosperous coming new year. The question of who owns Nowruz can be hotly debated at time with accusations of stealing the holiday. But unlike other holidays, Nowruz is not based on a human event like a victorious battle or someone's birth. Instead, it comes from nature herself, from the astronomical phenomenon of the equinox when both day and night are of equal length. It happened before there were humans making it theoretically possible that dinosaurs had no ruse. Can you imagine being able to dye dinosaur eggs? All right, my flight of fancy, but I like the idea. The holiday is actually Earth's holiday. And in most of human history, our agrarian roots, the beginning of the growing season was greatly anticipated since survival depended on it. Circle dances are powerful as uniting community needed for planting, growing, and harvesting. Pottery shards depict dancers even inside the mouth of a, of a jar where it's not visible ex except to the person who is pouring the liquid out of it. Circles reinforce equality because everyone is equal distance from the center. Remember, the ancient Persians were known as skilled astronomers who were keenly aware of the celestial movements of the planets. And we can see from images of Persepolis of what some have interpreted as a Nowruz procession. Also, a fresco from Afrasiab, which is in present day Samarkand, Uzbekistan, there's a scene that also may depict a Nowruz event. This reawakening of nature and the import, central importance of Nowruz for these early civilizations has inspired Persian poets over the centuries. So we will take a moment for a poem by Jalaladin Rumi, translated by Coleman Barks. I'm sure it's familiar to some of you, but it perfectly expresses the awakening of nature. Again, the violet bows to the lily. Again, the rose is tearing off her gown. The greenwoods have come 
from the other world, tipsy like the breeze up to some new foolishness. Again, near the top of the mountain, the anemone's sweet features appear. The hyacinth speaks formally to the jasmine. Peace be with you. And peace to you, lad. Come walk with me in this meadow. Again, there are Sufis everywhere. The bud is shy, but the wind removes her veil suddenly, my friend. The friend is here like water in the stream, like a lotus on the water. The narcissus winks at the mysteria. Whatever you say, the clove to the willow, you are the one I hope for. The willow replies, consider these chambers of mine yours, welcome. The apple, orange, why the frown? So that those who mean harm will not see my beauty. The ring dove comes asking, where, where is the friend? With one note, the nightingale indicates the rose. Again, the season of spring has come and a spring source rises under everything, a moon sliding from the shadows. Many things must be left unsaid because it's late, but whatever conversation we haven't had tonight, we'll have tomorrow. Spring cleaning. This is a custom shared by many different traditions. And this year, after being locked down in our homes for a year, some house cleaning may be especially in order. The Iranian tradition is called Khane Tekani, which means house shaking. It's a great image, shaking out the carpets and shaking ourselves awake. There's also a spiritual dimension because, well, cleanliness is next to godliness and this cleaning is an act of purification, reflecting some of the Zoroastrian roots of uh, early Persian culture. Good thoughts, good words, good deeds, the constant struggle between the forces of good and evil, between darkness and light. Clean homes attract angelic creatures like the farishtas, and these creatures can protect occupants from the forces of evil. So clean your house. Other activities include coloring eggs. Does that sound familiar? Of course, there are holiday shopping trips to gather all the necessary ingredients for special dishes and desserts, items for the half scene, which will be discussed in a moment, and there are also gifts to prepare. We all can relate to the excitement of holiday preparations, and Nowruz is a bit like the Western holidays of Christmas, New Year's, and Easter all rolled into one mega holiday and even longer because it lasts a full 13 days. Some people find heralds of spring in the appearance of certain flowers or the returns of certain birds, but there are also human heralds in cultures that celebrate no ruse. In Uzbekistan and Azerbaijan, they have such characters. Uh, for the Uzbeks, it's Bobo Dekan, who's like a farmer guy, which makes sense. It goes back to our uh, agrarian roots. Um, and the Azeris have Kosa and Kessel. They're kind of humorous fellows to uh, carry on with the shows. But in the Persian tradition, we have uh, Amu Norus and Haji Farouz. And it's Haji Farouz who's a bit prove problematic because he is traditionally performed in blackface. So just a little warning of coming up to the next picture. There have been various explanations of this practice, including connections to the legendary Iranian prince Siavash, who is described in the Shahnameh. In pre-Islamic times, he was venerated in Central Asia as the god of dying and reviving vegetation. So this is a very old uh, sense of the, the king must die, but then he comes back every year with new cro uh, crops. But in Shaname, he's falsely accused of a crime. So he rides through a colossal mountain of fire on his horse, which some explain resulted in a sooty face. But other related cultures who have uh, connections with the Shaname 
don't have a blackface messenger. And there are other elements in Haji Farouz that indicates that he was probably an enslaved person who sings and dances for his master in a comic manner, like a jester. Slavery persisted as a legal practice in Iran until 1929, when parliament introduced a bill that granted slaves freedom and declared them equal to all other Iranians. Although African slaves were dispersed across Iran, many Afro-Iranians settled in the southern regions bordering the Persian Gulf after their emancipation. Happily, Iranian Americans have come up with a solution that allows this character of Haji Farouz to be reimagined in a new manner. Oh, he still wears the signature red clothing and often plays a drum, but now his face is painted with the colors of the Iranian flag. Another important preparation is the creation of the Hafsin, a display of seven objects that begin with the letter S. It is believed that in pre-Islamic times, there was a haft sheen, seven items starting with the letter sh, And this included wine, sarab, which of course is forbidden in Islam. So the whole sh connection had to go, it was banned. But my personal impression, and no Iranian has ever said this to me, my personal belief is that the half scene is sort of a vestigial altar. And think about it, what is an altar? An altar is a sacred space where offerings are placed and prayers are directed. It's a focus for meditation. It's a focus for our hopes and our wishes. And those of you who are familiar with alt altars in other cultures, you'll see that there are re uh, resemblances. So let's take a look at that traditional half scene. Most of the elements that can be found on it are things that are in most kitchens. Okay, well, maybe most Iranian kitchens, but they're also connected to folk magic practices. So sabza, those are the lentil sprouts that grow in a, in a dish that symbolize rebirth. Those are the green ones you can see there. Samanu is that pudding that I mentioned before. And of course, it's so filled with vitamins, you can imagine after a winter where people are not getting fresh fruits and vegetables, that this would be very helpful. Senjid, which is the dried fruit of the oleaster tree. Okay, you may not have this one at home. Um, you'd have to go to your Persian store for it. Sir, you might have garlic, okay. Seed, apple, that's easy. Somak, which are the berries, somak berries and their reddish, you know, maybe you could substitute with chili pepper. Um, and serka vinegar, which sim symbolizes wisdom of age and patience. And especially since we have been losing so many of our elders as a result of the pandemic, that the, the symbol of serka has a tender spot in my heart. We need to always remember and revere our elders because they do have wisdom of experience. You know, the, there are other things that you can put on to your half scene. And this is really a great uh, point of pride in Iranian homes to have a beautiful, it has to be beautiful. And all the people, uh, you know, Iranians love beauty. They just have to have beauty. So this having a beautiful half scene, having it displayed in a very artistic way, uh, way is quite important to them. And so you can have other things on that, that some start with S, some don't, like the uh, hyacinth or money, the seke or sat, which is the a clock or a watch, because it reminds us of time. And we've been kind of unmoored from time recently, so it might be a good thing. Eggs, again, you know, we, we have that in Easter celebrations. Mirror, which is a symbol of self-reflection. Candles, of course, enlightenment, and the goldfish, a little bit controversial um, because people let the goldfish out at the very end on the uh, very last day of Nowruz, and the poor little goldfish don't do so well. So now some people are not using goldfish. Instead, they're putting an orange in a, in a clear um, container, glass container. 
uh, they'll find other ways. So if you're going to have goldfish, be sure that they have a, a safe place. Let's be kind to our, our finned brothers and sisters. And then finally, there's a book. Um, it can be a Quran, but often it's, it's a book of poetry. And this is where bibliomancy comes in. Uh, you might be familiar with this term. You know, we all want to know what's going to happen next. We all have that curiosity. So one way to read the future is to have a thought, a question, and then open a book to a page. And what is ever is on that page is a clue to what is going to happen in the future. So um, people do this with Bibles. And uh, there was actually something, um, a, a book of omens, the Falname, that was in earlier Persian times, where you would go to the Falchiar and ask them a question. And then the, they'd open this book. And then you'd find out what was going to happen. They would interpret the big picture in the book. So this is an old tradition. And it exists in many cultures. Again, the, the half scene is beautiful and it just makes you feel happy to look with at it. And also get, what gets included are some delicious treats, special cookies and, and things, you know, very tasty things are put out because one of the things that happens during the celebration of Nowruz is that you visit everybody. You go out and you, you, you visit your relatives the senior members of the family first, but everybody's seeing each other. So you want to have something beautiful for your guests. This is maybe my favorite Hof scene. Uh, this was taken a year ago in Tehran. And these are hospital workers, you know, during the whole uh, outbreak of COVID and they have made this beautiful Hof scene. It's so important that that that's why I think it has some uh, power as an altar, as a as a sacred space that they had that in the hospital for the workers. Now, one important occasion that happens before the actual date of No Ruse, the actual equinox. It happens on the last Wednesday of the year. Remember, I said that the new year begins on no ruse. That's the first day of the new year. So working backwards, that last Wednesday is Taharshan Ben. That's the last day of last Wednesday of the year. And this is a time for a very important um, celebration. This is a chance to purify yourself. Again, fire is very important in Zoroastrianism, the idea of it being clean, cleansing and being pure. So this is a chance to burn away all the bad of the past year and to be clean and ready. Your house is clean. Now you yourself have to be clean to walk into the new year. So you see some people up in the mountains. I think this is in Kurdistan where they're um, holding these uh, torches. This is another area um, that looks, their costumes look, they're from uh, uh, Mazandaran. Uh, I, I get worried when I see long skirts and these fires. Um, so since you're, look, we're all ha having this event on Tahar Shambhe, after the lecture, you can go um, maybe take a candle outside on the driveway or uh, somewhere safe outside. You have to do this outside and just jump over it and, and purify yourself. This is an example of a, a character in Azeri culture who's, who's like Haji Farooz, a herald of, of the new year, welcoming the year. He's green kosa. So you see there's alternatives to Haji Farooz, but these interesting hats that these pointed hats um, are part of it and if you see some really ancient images from this part of the world they they had hats like that so um, it's just interesting to see how many things last through the generations so here's you know safe and sane jumping over fires and the Azari community in Maryland has had celebrations of this. They're 
they're all dancing in a circle. And remember, I told you about the importance of a circle and the very antiquity of a circle for humans, where we travel in a circle and people would take turns jumping over the fire. And people are holding hands and performing that line dance yali. The children also have things to do. They go from house to house. So everybody knows each other, right, in the neighborhoods. And they'll sing. And then they go to the door to door. Uh, they are rewarded sometimes with coins um, and with treats, you know, all these special cookies and things that are made for the holiday. Then at the actual moment, the family is all gathered together. So that is why it, I guess the analogy would be, you know, Christmas morning, everybody's together. Um, so, and even I like, I love this because the cats are involved as well, but you can see the half scene. You can see the head of the family reading from the book. Everyone is gathered there to share that moment, the beginning of the new year. And of course, special food is made. There's a special rice dish with fish and some really great desserts and things. So uh, people have been preparing this food, uh, you know, days in advance. Just think of the Western holidays and the meals that you prepare ahead of time. And that idea of a circle and everybody getting outside to enjoy the weather is important as well. This is a very old picture of kids in Uzbekistan on this sort of um, archetypal merry-go-round, but out there, again, that circle, the, uh, the symbol of return and rotation is repeated here. So we have a lovely video that was made for us by Nazir Abbas. It shows the different cultures that celebrate Nowruz in that all the dancers have a different ethnic costume on, but they're all dancing together. Uh, so although we can't show you videos of every single dance from all these different cultures, you can enjoy the beauty of their natural national costumes. And it's a good reminder of how widespread No Ruse is and how many cultures celebrate it. So it, as I said, it's really mother nature's holiday. آمد بهار جان ها ای شاخ تهر به رقصا جون یوسف اندر آمد مصر و شکر به رقصا ای شاه عشق پرور مانند شیر مادر ای شیر جوش در راه و جان پدر به رقصا آمد بهار جان ها ای شاخ تر به رقصا ای شاخ تر به رقصا ای شاخ تر به رقصا جان پدر به رقصا جان پدر به رقصا از پا و زر بریدی بی پا و زر به رقصا ای خوش کمر به رقصا باران آنجا قبات چه باشد ای خوش کمر به رقصا در دست جام باده آمد با تن پیاده گر نیستی تو ماده زاد شاه نر به رقصا آمد بهار جان ها ای شاخ تر به رقصا ای شاخ تر به رقصا شوق در به رقصا جان پدر به رقصا جان پدر به رقصا از پا و سر بریدی بی پا و سر به رقصا ای خوش کمر به رقصا ای شوق در به رقصا جان پدر به رقصا جان پدر به رقصا از پا و سر بریدی بی پا و سر به رقصا ای خوش کمر به رقصا
So after this presentation, I know that all of you are going to go outside with some safe little kind of flame source and jump over it. So you have to remember this particular chant. You're going to say, may my yellow go to you and may your red come to me. Why? Because if you think about when somebody is yellow, they're sickly. I mean, if you think about um, their jaundice. So there was association of the color yellow and illness. And then when somebody's red, red cheeked and ruddy, um, you know, uh, it's healthy. So remember that you want, you want the, the flame um, is going to take away any sickness and illness in you, put it into the flame, and then from the flame, take that red. You know, I don't know if this is going to cure COVID. I still think you should get a vaccine. But, you know, and while you're waiting for the vaccine, this might be a possibility. And then you see how everybody's outside, this example of, of Kurds doing that line dance that I told you about, like being all connected and, and celebrating that new year together, that great festive spirit. This is Silk Road Dance Company doing a Kurdish dance right at the No Roos Festival in, in Virginia every year, one of our favorite dances to perform. This is Silk Road again, performing for another No Roos celebration. And you'll notice that the dancer is holding sabze, the, the sprouted uh, wheat that is a symbol of the new year that goes on your hafsin. And the Aziris use it as well. So it, it's a very important part of the culture. This looks more like the Qashqai, again, dancing in a circle with the um, beautiful, colorful costumes. And again, everybody close together. It's been a while since we've been able to join hands or dance together in a circle, but soon we'll be away from that. This is in uh, Soviet, what was Soviet Georgia. Of course, they have an Azeri population there as well. Turkmen, here again, we see the sabze, the green, that, you know, things coming back. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm out in my garden every day looking for signs of those little green noses coming up and the crocuses have finally blossomed. So we, we see nature's coming back to life. She's forgiven us, maybe. Uzbekistan has huge, extravagant, over-the-top, amazing Nowruz celebrations, and they call it Navruz. They plan for months in advance, new costumes, new choreographies, all their favorite singers. It's quite a, a great spectacle. And again, it wasn't uh, really celebrated under Soviet times, not on a big national level, but now that independence is de independent, this will be their 30th year of independence in September. They've really uh, revived that holiday. And what's great, everybody dances. So even the seniors with their beautiful costumes, they're out there dancing, playing drums, and welcoming the new year. Again, this is celebrations at uh, the No Roos Festival in Northern Virginia. But you see it's cold. You see how bundled up everybody is. You have to go outside though. I mean, that's just, that's it. And you know, we're finding that it's so much healthier for us to be outside now. So this is a reminder that with Persians, there's no excuse to stay inside, come on out. Some of you will r recognize the the very elegant lady. This is the uh, former Empress of Iran at another Nauru celebration. And now we come to the last element in the Nauru's observation, Sizde Bedar. So it's the 13th, the 13th day. Now the idea is that 13 is something unlucky and you do not want to be home on that day. So you pack up everybody and maybe have a picnic you head outside, especially to be near running water. And even in bad weather, people will just take 
you know, they'll take tents. Even if it's raining, you need to be outside. You need to leave your house on that day. Other things can happen on that day. You can take that sabza that you carefully grew and had on your hafsin, and you can let it float on the, the stream or river, the body of water that is near you. And girls will sometimes tie knots in the grass with ideas about like, you know, are they, you know, getting married, their future. And there is one element of Tahar Shambeth, going back a little bit to that last Wednesday before the new year. That's important to remember because tonight is that night. There is a belief that if you eavesdrop, you will hear things that are going to be um, of importance to tell you what the new year is going to be like. So you'll overhear a conversation and whatever that random conversation is, that is like, again, revealing the future, just as people would op open a book of poetry and try to see what what the future is going to be, those bits of conversation are important. So let's remind everybody tonight to only say good and positive things because somebody may be eavesdropping and you want to make sure that they have something positive to hear to take them through the next year. So just a reminder tonight when you're jumping over fire to say really positive things. Um, and then that also means that other people will be saying a positive thing. So we'll all have a good near like, isn't it great that COVID is gone completely from the human race? Just saying. Then we have to remember that No Roots has really become an American holiday too. Because even though the cultures of, of origin that celebrate it are holding it to their hearts, it's also come over here and, and it's becoming more mainstream. So this is a photograph, uh, you may recognize it. This is um, the White House. So Silk Road Dance Company was honored to be the performers at the very first No Ruse celebration. And it was quite an event. Uh, everybody was in high spirits. It was in all these different cultures, People had come, not only people around um, the D.C. area, but people had flown in from other states to come and be part of this really historic celebration. So I'd like to remind everybody that now No Ruse is really an American holiday, but more than that, it's a holiday for all humanity because it celebrates the rebirth of nature and we need to we need to remember that Mother Nature has sent us to the room our rooms and told us to start behaving. Uh, we've gotten out of control, and this is a real chance to purify and honor our Mother Earth and just celebrate. We'll close the presentation portion of this evening with a beautiful Azeri dance by Sepide Farshadi. It is the Azerbaijani drum dance. Now, in a way, she is a harbinger of No Ruz. Like Haji Farouz was a harbinger, she is wearing red. She is playing a drum. This is a traditional dance. But I think it's important to remember that symbols can change. And if a symbol has uh, some unfortunate or unhappy associations, we can still keep the idea of bringing newness, bringing that redness of the fire into our lives and letting go of the negative aspects of other symbols that have been in the past. So this isn't a Haji Farouz dance, but it's certainly a beautiful dance with a drum, it's Azerbaijani, and the red, co red costume is absolutely glorious. So we hope you enjoy this last dance and then we will regroup for a conversation and hope that you'll share your personal experiences of No Ruse.
Thank you.